Praise the Lord, this is Dr. Alvarez coming from, from the touch of Jesus Christ. We have Apostle Gil with us today from Ever Increasing Ministries. Stay tuned, be blessed. Hi everybody, good to see you today and uh, good to be with you. I'll take some time, look at the scripture today. And I've entitled this session today, Anywhere But Backwards. Anywhere But Backwards. Now, I don't know about you, but each one of us has a choice to move forward or to move backwards. And the easiest thing sometimes is to look back behind us and look at our past. So today, this teaching is going to help you to focus on moving forward and to not keep looking back. So I'd like you to, if you're following along on your device or if you have a Bible nearby, to take, take it and, and turn with me, if you would, to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12 through 16. I'm going to read the scripture. I'm reading from the uh, New Living Translation today. And it says this. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection from which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Verse 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we've already made. That's the Apostle Paul speaking and speaks some very good truths to us. It tells us to not look back in the past, but to hold on and press towards our future. Because God has some good things in store for us. Now I'd like you to turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Or on your device, pull it up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18. And this is where we're, <clears throat> excuse me, where we're going to go with the scripture today. In, in uh, looking at anywhere but backwards. Or another, another uh, title you could call this today is No U-Turns. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. The 18 says this, always be joyful, never stop praying, <clears throat> be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Or it says, be thankful in all things, it says pray without ceasing, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So I want to talk about how do we move forward? The first thing is this. We see that right out of that text in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 16. It says this. It says, rejoice always. Or it says, always be joyful. And sometimes it's not always easy to be joyful, to be happy. But the scripture tells us many places that we're to allow the joy of the Lord to come through our life. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Or you might know it as rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That word rejoice in the original language means to twist, to turn about, to celebrate. And so when we get excited about the things of God, we should celebrate the things of God. Hebrews 1.9, one of my favorite verses, says this, You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than anyone else. You know how many times have you been upset and you didn't know what to do, but then suddenly it's like, some joy began to bubble up inside of you. And the joy of the Lord just began to 
stir up and, and suddenly you're just joyful at that moment. Acts chapter 2 verse 28 says, You have shown me the way to life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Psalm 68 3 says, But let the godly rejoice. Let them be glad in God's presence. Let them be filled with joy. I love this one in Acts chapter 13, verse 52. It says, And the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Mm. That's good, isn't it? To know that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, how do we move forward? How do we not take a U-turn? By staying joyful, by always being joyful, by rejoicing in the Lord. Psalm chapter 30, verse 11 says, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with great joy. Yes. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but living a life of goodness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Or righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, it says in another version. So we see that joy is important because the scripture addresses it so many places. Galatians 5.22 says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Uh, and keeps on going with other fruit of the Spirit. Listen to what it says in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7. I love this portion of scripture. It says, instead of shame and dishonor. Oh, have you ever been shamed before? Has anybody dishonored you before? Listen to what it says. You will enjoy a double share of honor. You will possess a double portion <laughs> of prosperity in your land. And everlasting joy will be yours. Oh, come on. You should be excited about that. So if you've ever been shamed or dishonored, get ready because God is setting you up. It says that you will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the first way in which we keep moving forward and don't go backwards is by always remaining joyful. Number two is this. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Or it says, New Living says, keep on praying. That's the second way in which we keep moving forward. <clears throat> Isaiah 56, 7 says, I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem and will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. You know, one of the things in North America church today that's missing is a heart for prayer. Many people from different countries that have come to Canada have been a great inspiration to us because I believe that God has brought them here to help us learn how to pray again because we've lost that love for the prayer before. Matthew 21, 13 says, He said to them, The scriptures declare my temple will be called a house of prayer. But you've turned it into a den of iniquity or a den of thieves. Second Chronicles 7, 14, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Yes. So if we seek his face and we turn from our ways, then we'll move towards what God really has. He will restore our land. Mark eleven twenty four, great verse. says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Oh, thank you, Jesus. How many times have you prayed a prayer and you wonder if it's even getting anywhere? You wonder if it's getting past the ceiling. But today I want you to know that if you pray, 
And if you ask, then you will receive. Scripture says that if you believe you've received it, then it will be yours. So you have to believe it in here before you have it out here. So we believe inside our spirit man so that it can manifest and come true in the natural. Look what it says, 1 John 5, 14 to 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything concerning according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Matthew 6, one that's familiar to many of us, says this. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we've forgiven those who sin against us. Do not let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So Jesus said, when you pray, you need to pray this way. There's something very powerful about prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says this. Don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Now, many years ago when I was a young boy, and I remember and I was, as I grew up and then I went to Bible college, my grandfather would write me little clips, little pieces of paper, clippings of Sunday school papers, and he'd write on them. And he wrote this. He always told me this. When in a fix, Philippians 4, 6. And I always remembered. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, offer your, self, offer your requests unto God. And this says, and thank him for all that he's done. Ephesians 6.18 says this. Pray in the spirit at all times on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Pray in the spirit. I want to encourage you today to try to do that each day. I tell, I tell people that if they want to pray in their prayer language, then they start off five minutes a day, and then the next day they go 10 minutes, and then 15 minutes, and they pray in the Spirit. It's interesting because there's never been a day greater for prayer on this earth. Many years ago, I believe it's 17 years ago now, there's a man in Kansas City named Mike Bickle, and he felt he had heard from the Lord that he was to start a 24-7 prayer room of worship and prayer for 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Mike went and shared with, with some of those close to him and they thought he was a little bit crazy and then he shared with some others and they thought he was crazy, but... He really believed and he really knew that God had a plan for him and that God really wanted to do this. So therefore, he went for the vision. And today in Kansas City, we have what is known as IHOP, International House of Prayer. And they're going 24 hours, seven days a week every day of the year. And God is using it. God is pouring out His Spirit. I've been down there twice. And it's amazing to see young adults mobilized from all over the world. There's young adults that have come that are praying, that are giving their life to prayer. And it's very powerful when we see people pray. I just had an opportunity to come back from Asia and while we were there, I mean, God moved in a mighty way. 
and we were we were in a specific country and in a specific gathering and as we were praying there was a knock on the door and the authorities showed and we weren't sure what was going to happen but God was with us and everything went smoothly we just dispersed and went our different ways but it was as we were praying and so we need to know that we need to be thankful for the opportunities that we have to pray because there's many places in the world that are going through persecution that don't have the privilege to pray openly like you and I do Everybody say, keep on praying. We continue with the second thing, keep on praying. It says in Ephesians 3, 16, 20. It says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is his love. May you experience the love of Christ through it is great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. Verse 20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or even think. Keep on praying. There's so many different prayer movements that are sweeping the world right now. God is doing such great things. God is doing great things through prayer in the underground church in China. God is doing great things through prayer in the underground church in Vietnam. God is, God is sweeping many young adults all around the world to be mobilized for prayer. There's never been a day where there's been more prayer in the earth. And why do you think the fight is on? Because every inch we take must be taken through prayer. And so God is doing some exciting things. So I would encourage you today to begin to pray. Each day, pray in the Holy Ghost. Believe God to lead you. Amen? So the first thing was, if we're going to move towards our future, was rejoice always, or be joyful always. Number two is keep on praying. And number three is always be thankful. Colossians 3, 16 to 17 says this. Let the message about Christ and all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Here's one that's familiar to many of us. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give praises to him, and bless his name. Psalm 100, verse 4. Then Psalm 100, 105, verse 1 says this. Give thanks to the Lord... And proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Always be thankful. Psalm 106 verse 1 says this. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. So always be thankful. Next verse is this. Hebrews 13, 15 says this. Therefore, 
By him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Always be thankful. Final verse is this. Back to 1 Thessalonians, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 19 through 24. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies. But test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. But now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and make your whole spirit and soul body become blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen for he who calls you is faithful. It's very powerful here because how do we stay thankful in the midst of tough times? The question many of us struggle with. We have to keep believing that God has a better day. Keep believing that God has better things in store for us. I like to say there's plenty more to put in store. And God wants to do so much for us. He wants to help us more than we can even help ourselves. And verse 19 says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. I don't know, but one of the things I'm very thankful for today is the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I need him. I can't do it without him. Without him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can, I can do anything because with him, all things are possible. Test everything. Hold on to what is good, it says. Stay away from evil. And then I, lo I love what it says in verse 24. It says, for God will make this happen. For he who calls you is faithful. He who calls you to what? He who calls you to himself. He who calls you so that you can be one that's always thankful. You see, the greatest way that you can have breakthrough is by being thankful. How do you be thankful? Well, we talked about Psalms just a few scriptures ago. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and come in to his courts with praise. So I want to talk about praise. You can just write these references down because I don't, I don't have them all written out, but Praise means to express our appreciation to God for who he is and for the things he has done. To express our appreciation to God for who he is and for the things he is and has done. And you can write these scriptures down. Psalm 100 verse 4. Psalm 34 verse 1. Psalm 52 verse 9. Psalm 63, 4. Psalm 71, verse 8. Psalm 135, verse 3. So, I want to, in closing in this teaching today, we know that the three things that we've talked about on moving forward is first of all, we've got to be joyful. Then we've got to keep on praying. And then we need to always be thankful. And so, what does it say? The Psalms that we talked about says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. So, one of the greatest ways that we can thank God is through our praise. So, I want to talk about quickly, just before we move on and finish up this session, Psalm chapter 103, verse 3 through 5. I want to talk quickly about five different ways that we can praise the Lord. Five reasons we have to praise the Lord. 
Now look what it says in Psalm 103, verse 3 through 5. Verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals you from all disease, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So, five reasons why we praise. Number one is this. Verse three says this. He forgives us, or it says he pardons our iniquities. Now that's a pretty good reason. How many are thankful that Jesus Christ comes and lives in your heart and that he forgives your sins? I don't know about you, but I'm very thankful for that. Because if we, if we weren't thankful for that, we, we'd have no place to go. I mean, we wouldn't have life because he forgave us so that we could have life and life to the fullest, eternal life and the ultimate life. Number two is this. Another reason we need to praise is because that same verse, number three, it says, he heals all our disease. Woo, hallelujah. And maybe you're watching today by TV and media and you say, well, I have a physical sickness that I'm struggling with. Then Jesus Christ wants to come and he wants to heal you. It says he healed all their disease. That doesn't mean some of them. It doesn't mean just one or two were healed. It says all. That means everything. That means all of them that were sick were healed. And so we need to believe that faith would rise in our hearts so that we could see people healed by the power of Jesus Christ. He still saves today. He still heals today. He still forgives today, which is number three. He still saves today, verse number four. It says, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with love and compassion. So number three, he still saves today. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you faced recently. All I know is that Jesus Christ still saves we used to sing a song when I was growing up. It says, I serve a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want you to know today that Jesus Christ is the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can come and free you from your sin so that you can have assurance of eternal life. Maybe you're watching today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, but he's saying, hey, I'm ready. If you want to ask me into your life, I'm ready to come into your heart. So maybe today, before we even end this broadcast, maybe you'll say, I need Jesus Christ into my heart. I'm going to say a prayer right now, and I want you to say it after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you right now that you come and live in my life. I thank you that you forgive my sins. I thank you that they heal all my diseases. And I thank you, Lord, that my very best days are yet to come. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. See, Jesus comes and lives in your heart just like that. You made a decision. You said that for the very first time. He comes and lives in your heart. Welcome to the family of God. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, number four says this. Fourth reason why we need to praise. Because... He redeemed my life from the pit who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. So the fourth reason we need to praise is because he loves me. Because he loves you. The word of God tells us he loves us with an everlasting love. And so that's a real good reason to praise. Just because he loves us so much. You know, there's a song. He loves me so much. He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. And you know what? Jesus Christ really loves you. And that's why he came and gave his life for you. 
so that you could know the love in your life. And number five is this. The final reason that we should praise is because verse five, I like what it says. It says, who satisfies your years with good things. Oh, glory be to God. He satisfies your desires with good things. So, God is concerned about you, and he cares about what you care about. And he, he, he satisfies your desires with good things. That means good things are in store for you. Scripture tells us no good thing will he withhold from those that love him. So if you love him today, then he's not going to hold back his love from you. But he is going to let his love flow through you so that you can be ministered to, so that you can love others. And the love of Jesus is going to flow through you and you're going to be able to do great and mighty things for the sake of the gospel. So back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We started all this. We talked about anywhere but backwards. So I want you to know today that we have to make the choice. We can go forward or we can go backwards. Now, many of us keep looking back and we look to our past. Heard it said many times that when the enemy comes and tries to remind you of your past, you need to remind him of his future. Because your future is bright because Jesus Christ lives in your heart. And so your past can't hold you back unless you let it. And so your past needs to become your past. And you need to look back behind and say, bye-bye, past. You need to wave at it and tell it get behind you. Say, past, be gone in Jesus' name. I leave you behind. I'm moving forward in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you decide in your heart that you're going to move forward, then your greatest days are still ahead of you. And God will do so much through you. I love what it says. It says, Philippians, forgetting what lies behind, but pressing on towards the high calling of which you have received in Christ Jesus. And so today, I'm asking you, if you're struggling with your past, please come and give it to the Lord today. You don't have to hold on to your past any longer. You can get free from that today in the name of Jesus by looking forward and making a conscious decision by I am going to move forward and I'm going to see the greatest days and the greatest things in God that I've ever seen. Why? Because what happens is we learn that thanksgiving is the key to our breakthrough. So when we praise the Lord, when we begin to give him thanks for everything he's done, that's when the Lord is ready to let us see great breakthrough. And I want to pray for us today in the name of Jesus. If you're watching, I want you to just extend your hand even to the screen today. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now that people that are watching today would just begin to receive their breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that they're going to give you a life of thanksgiving. And you said, I will bless you, O Lord. My soul gives thanks to you, O God. And so today, I pray that wherever they are, they would just begin to thank you and begin to give you praise for all that you've done, begin to praise you for the breakthrough in their life, begin to thank you that they're not going to look back anymore. I break the past right now in the name of Jesus, and I command them in the name of Jesus to move forward in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you that their best days are yet to come. I thank you, God, that you still have a plan for their life. I thank you, Lord, that the way ahead of them is paved by your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that you said, those who are led by the spirit, they are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. So I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that breakthrough would come, 
that every person that needs a miracle today would receive it by faith right now. They're going to always be joyful. They're going to always rejoice and they're going to keep on praying and they're going to see great things happen through their praise. And we thank you, Lord, that you have a great plan in store. And we thank you, Lord, that the very best days are yet to come. And we give you praise today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, just before we're done today, I want you to lift your hands and just say, thank you, Jesus. I believe that my breakthrough is on its way. Today, I believe I receive that I'm getting everything I need in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless you. Praise the Lord. I take it you were blessed by the message of Apostle Gill. To our partners who are our faithful viewers, we thank you again for helping us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ through the world that people may learn who Jesus is. Stay blessed. We'll see you next week.